Hey everyone, doing well, I hope. Uh, now then, Toys in the Attic and Aerosmith from 1975. One of those perfect classic rock albums from start to finish with a one-week filler track mucking up the works. Aerosmith's masterpiece album, if you will. Uh, its follow-up, Rocks, uh, being pretty strong as well, mind you. Uh, now, this, of course, is back in the mid-70s when Aerosmith's music was much more predominantly guitar riff-driven fare, and far and away the best version of Aerosmith, in my humble opinion, Aerosmith 1.0. And today, we're going to learn how to play every riff from this fantastic album, front to back, now, I did this same thing a while back for the Cult's Electric album. I'll post it down below if you want to check it out. And it's been a fairly popular video of mine, so I figured that I'd do it again, but focus on a different album this time. And Toys in the Attic by Aerosmith won out for this go-round. So here we are. Good then. That said, not going to waste any more time here chit-chatting about it. Let's close in here a little bit on the fretboard and get started, shall we? With track one, side one, and the title track, Toys in the Attic. Let's go. Good then, track one, side one, and toys in the attic. We are in standard tuning for this tutorial. We are in standard tuning for pretty much every one of these tutorials, except for no more, no more, which we have to be in open E5 tuning, but we'll get to that when we get to the track. Uh, so um, there's two guitars going on here, like most uh, Aerosmith tracks, and uh, in this case, they're doing something completely different from each other at the beginning of this song. This is what Brad Whitford is doing. <laughs> And he's repeating that four times. E power chords, three finger power chord here at the seventh fret position, just bouncing off the uh, palm muted open E string. Kind of like that, right? that three times. That's one. That's two. That's three. He's going to drop into a D power chord with a mute before he hits it on the upstroke. And then he's going to move into an A power chord and do the exact same thing. Mute, upstroke on the power chord. Kind of like that. And he repeats that four times. Now the fourth time he repeats it, when he goes to D, he's not going to go straight to A this time. He's going to go to B, and then he's going to go to A, and the first verse begins. Right? And then we're into the first verse. Now that's what Brad is doing. What Joe is doing is this. Playing that little progression there starting with a palm muted open E, and then he's gonna to go to the second fret of the D and pull it off to open. Grab the second fret of the A, and then back to open D. Back to the second fret of the A, third fret of the low E, pull it off to open. And that's the progression. Repeat. Three times. And then he drops into exactly what uh, Brad is doing, D to A with a mute before, except we're not playing power chords this time, we're playing cowboy chords. Well, that's power chord, I suppose, the A. Mute, mute, back into the riff. And again, repeats that four times. The fourth time, same as what Brad is doing. He's not going straight to D to A. He's going to jump into B first before going off to A. Into the first verse. Now, the first verse is a mix of power chords and cowboy chords, and it goes something like this. So it's A power chord to an E power chord to a D chord. A, E, D. Then we're going to go D, A, G. D, A, G. Then we're going to go D, A, B. D, A, B. Right? So that's uh, for the beginning of the verse. A, E, D. D, A, G. D, A, B. And when we drop into B, we're going to play this riff and we're going to repeat it twice. So 
So B power chord, three finger power chord. I'm gonna grab the four of the A, slide it into six. I'm gonna grab a double stop with our index on the uh, four and then off to two. Kinda like that. Drop back into the power chord, B. And then you're gonna uh, grab this double stop, which we're holding as part of the B power chord here. Hit it three times and then off to two. And then you repeat the whole thing again. And then off to an E power chord and let it ring. And then we're into this section of the first verse. And you repeat this, I think, four times. Pulling off 10 to 9 to 7 all in one motion of the B string. Drop into a double stop on the 9 of the D of the uh, D and the G. Then you're going to go 7 of the G up to 9 of the D. And then you're going to drop into this double stop, which is on the 7 of the D, 6 of the G. And when you drop into that double stop, you're immediately going to grab the 7 of the A string, slide out to open A. And then you're going to hit an A power chord right into an E power chord. And then you repeat that four times, I believe. Right? Repeat. And then the very last time, we're going to hang on that double stop and let it ring. And then we're back into the chords again that we were playing at the beginning of the verse. into this riff. And then we're into the chorus, which is the same as the opening riff of the track. And that, my friends, is how you play toys in the attic, pretty much all of it except for the solo. So uh, let's move on to Uncle Salty, track two. All right, Uncle Salty goes something like this. Now, I'm playing the bass parts along with this, along with these chords, this open droning open A string, right, is actually bass. The, uh, the guitars are actually just striking the chords. But I'm playing the bass part along with it to give it a little more flow, right, which you can do, it'll sound better, I think, actually, if you're just playing it on one guitar. Just a long, you know, nice light open A string. So the chords that we're dealing with here is a little A major triad, seven, six, five. And you're just gonna strum down those, giving a little separation between the notes. You're not just striking the chord, right? It's a nice little separation between the notes. Slight arpeggiation. Into a D major triad here, seven, seven, seven. A C major triad, same little F shape that we started with, but now we're on the 10, 9, 8. Back to the D and repeat. And then we're into this. So it's just open A, 6, 7 of the D twice, let them ring together. And then one final open A, and that seven of the D slide out of it. And then the vocals come in, we're into the first verse. Similar chords go something like this. And then you repeat that twice. So it starts with a little pull off from uh, open A. It starts with an open A actually, and then a little pull off, seven to six of the D string. Kind of like that. 
And then on the upstroke, you can hit all of these chords on the upstroke. Uh, same little F shape, but now we're in A flat, and we're going to move it into A. Kind of like that. Same chord. Repeat. One more time. And after you repeat it three times, then we're going to move up to C, and then move it up to a D. Back to C, and then back to A. Repeat twice. G, hit it four times, and then we're going to continue uh, hitting this G, but now we're going to double time it, and then off to an open A string. One, two, three, double time, and then we're into this. Same chords that we were already playing. Sliding though, we're sliding from the A flat into the A. C into D, and then back to C, and then back to A. But when we go back to C, back to A, we're pick striking both of them. Back to G, one, two, three, double time. Repeat. And then we're into the second verse, which is the same as the first. And that is Uncle Salty. Uh, let's move on to track three and Adam's Apple with one of the coolest riffs on the entire album. Goes something like this. So this riff here, very, very inventive, very, very cool. Starts starts with a pull-off from the third fret off to open. We're kind of holding an A power chord here. So pulling off third fret of the A off to open. On the upstroke, uh, we're going to catch this little double stop here on the fifth fret of the B in the high E. Back to the third fret of the A, back off to open. Kind of like that. And then we're going to drop into the fourth fret of the D. Give it a half step bend and catch a double stop on the third fret of the B in the high E. On the upstroke. And then on the downstroke, you're going to catch the open D, open G. Double stop. Right, so that's the riff. And then you repeat. repeat it three times, we're going to drop into this F chord with an open G here. Three, three, open G, one. Just the four middle strings. You know, if you get your thumb over the top there, that works as well. And uh, so that's the first half of the riff. The second half of the riff is very similar, but it changes a little bit. So we repeat that four times. It's a little bit different from the opening riff. Starts A power chord and then a double pull off from the third fret to open A. Kind of like that. And then we're going to drop into this rather dissonant little bend. Uh, second fret of the G string bending the fourth fret of the uh, D string. So you're going to bend it, pick it, and then release it. Kind of like that. And, uh, and then we're just going to continue that, but instead of doing the double pull-off, we're going to grab the, the double stop at the fifth fret. So kind of like this. So that's the first time with the double pull-off. And then that little dissonant bend, right, bend release. And then you're going to grab the double stop instead of doing a double pull-off, and then just continue on. And after you repeat 
repeat that four times, we're gonna drop into an A power chord and just ride a palm muted open A string. And the vocals come in at this point. Into D. And then we're gonna we're gonna hit that D, and then we're gonna let it sit for a second. Then we're gonna hit it again, and then we're gonna chromatically ride it down from D, D flat to C to B. Right, and then you can drop into a little blues progression once you get into B. Back into the riff. Second verse. Second half of the first verse, I suppose. D. Write it down. Now this time we're going to go up to E. Back to D. Up to F. Back to A. to the uh, the next verse right and that is pretty much it for Adam's apple let's run through it nice and slow one more time at least the opening riff is Adam's Apple. Let's move on. Track four and the big one. All right, the big one. Walk this way. And uh, it goes a little something like this. to that in a second. So the main riff here, open A, one, two. And everything you play on the A string is going to be palm muted. Everything you're playing not on the A string, like going down here to the D string, up to the low E string, not palm muted. So the first three notes are palm muted, zero, one, two, and you're going to roll down to the two of the D string and not palm muted. Repeat it. And then when you repeat it, you're going to hang on that note just for a split second on the second fret of the D, go off to an open E, and choke the note off. And then you repeat the whole thing again. The second time you repeat it, instead of going to the open E, you're going to grab the third fret of the low E, pull it off to open, grab the second fret of the D string, that E note there, and choke that off. Repeat. And at that point, you grab a double stop here. It could be a slide guitar. It is a diff different guitar, most definitely on the studio version. Double stop, second fret, slide it up the neck into the riff that we're going to be playing during the first verse, which is very, very tricky to play. Let me tell you, it goes something like this. So we're in this uh, little uh, B5 chord here. Sorry, C5 chord. Uh, eighth fret of the low E, 10th fret of the A string. We're gonna kind of plant our fingers here, index and middle finger. And this is basically what we're playing. Right, very pinky intensive, this little section here. Eight, 10, 12, 10. 13, pulling off 12 back to 10. So that's basically what we're playing, but between each pick strike, we're going up to this eighth fret of the low E string and giving a little uh, down up, right? It starts with a little down up down. So there's a lot of string skipping going on here. It makes it very tricky, and plus, you know, your pinky's doing a lot of work here. So 
So that's what's going on here, nice and slow, right? <laughs> But at speed, very, very tricky. And you repeat that, I think, four times, the very final time. You're just gonna roll down instead of going up here with your pinky. You're just gonna go down to the, uh, the 10 of the D, roll it up to 10 of the A, off to an A power chord. Back into the main riff. Then he starts adding variations and mutes uh, the more he plays this uh, riff throughout the track. So it starts the same way, right? But now he starts adding mutes, a little down, up, down, mute. Kind of like that, right? Repeat. And then a little variation there. Right? Goes off to open, and then he does a pull off, and then goes down to that... Uh, e note there at the second fret. Repeat. Another little down up mute. Back into the riff. Back into that again. Back into that again for the second verse. And that is pretty much the whole track, barring all of the solos, the three solos in this one, right? And uh, that's it for Walk This Way. Let's move on to track five, and I believe it is big, 10 inch. Good then, track five and big, 10 inch. A song all about how the women go crazy when Stephen pulls out his big 10 inch. His big 10 inch record of a band that plays the blues. A uh, great naughty little uh, double entendre with this one. And uh, this is actually a cover of an old uh, big band uh, blues uh, track from the early 50s by a fellow by the name of Bull Moose Jackson, if I'm not mistaken. This is not so much a riff as just a, a basic 12-bar uh, blues progression in D. So I'm gonna show you how to play it regardless. Starts off like this. Eight to, all on the G string, eight to seven, six to five, four to three. And then you just choke that note off. And then we drop into this little blues pattern in D. Kind of like that, right? Just holding a D5 chord here, fifth fret, seventh fret, index, middle finger. And then we're just bouncing off the nine, 10 of the D string. Kind of like that, right? Typical blues pattern. And then we're gonna move it up to A. Back to D. And then up to an E5 chord, choke it off. So that's the opening of that one. E. And then we're going to go back to D. Back to A. Up to E. Hang on it. Back to A. And then we're into that little lick there that they play just here on the five sevens, right? I think you repeat that twice. Just place a little blues solo there. And then it's just right back into this again. Right? just repeats. It's just a little blues number. And uh, that is it for that one. So let's move on to uh, track six and Sweet Emotion. Go ahead, Sweet Emotion, track six from Toys in the Attic. Now it takes quite a while before the uh, guitars proper uh, come in on this one. It's mostly bass at the beginning. I think he actually sings the chorus at the beginning of this one without the guitars. There's some atmospheric guitars going on here, you know, with a talk box and whatnot, way, way in the background, uh, you know, drenched in reverb and delay and whatnot. We're not gonna get into that. Uh, we're gonna basically just cover when the guitars proper come in with a riff. And uh, when they do, they come in with this killer riff right here. And 
you got to repeat that like seven or eight times. So the riff kind of comes in on the offbeat. So the riff itself is kind of like D to A, right? And then you're going to play this. So A power chord. Then you're going to pull off the third fret of the A string off to open, up to the third fret of the low E, back to the A power chord, and then back to the third fret of the low E. Right? Except when the guitars initially come in, they do not come in on the D, they come in on the A power chord. Right? And then we start the D to A. And then every other time it's D to A. And after you repeat that, I think seven or eight times, we drop into this. And at this point in the track, we're going to repeat that four times. So we're pulling off five to three of the A string up to the five of the low E and slide out of it. And then we're going to go two, three, four, five of the uh, low E, chromatically as uh, ascend. Kind of like that. Triple hit on the two, triple hit on the three, double hit on the four, single hit on the five. Kind of like that, right? Repeat that four times. Now the final time, we're just going to do single notes on this two, three, four, five. Back to the main riff again, eight more times. And after you repeat that eight more times, we're back into this again. And we're going to repeat that at this point in the track eight times. And the final time, like the first time, single notes. The final time. And then we drop into the chorus. Now the guitars during the chorus are way in the background, but you can hear them. And this is what he's doing. He's pulling off five to three to open. Off to a double stop on the open D, open G, open G, and then drop onto a double stop here on the, uh, the two of the D and the G. And hit that twice. And then you're going to go five, and then open, three, four, open. And then again, off to the open D and G, back onto the two. So that's what's going on, we're kind of in the background during the chorus, and then after the chorus we're back into the main riff again. You know, eight more times or whatever it is, back into this again. Eight more times, final time you know, single notes on the two, three, four, five, and that leads into the guitar solo, and that's pretty much the whole track, minus the guitar solo. So that is how you play Sweet Emotion by Aerosmith. So uh, let's move on to uh, track seven, and track seven is No More, No More. Good then, No More, No More. Now we're dealing with a, a bit of unorthodox tuning with this one. We are tuned to open E5 tuning, which means every string on the guitar is tuned to either E or B. Now from standard tuning, our low E string is going to stay the same, our B string and E string are going to stay the same, but we need to change our A string, D string, and G string. We need to tune our A string up to a B, our D string up to E, and our G string down to E. So your D and G are both the same. So this is the tuning. Makes for a lovely open chord. Now the, uh, the opening riff to this one goes something like this.
we're going to repeat that three times. So we start with a slide into the fifth fret of the low E string. Then you're going to go open A, open D. And then you're going to go back up to that fifth fret and then back down to the open A one more time. And then you're going to go down to the open B on the upstroke and the open G. Right, just like that. Let me get my right hand in frame here. Now you're going to go back up to this note at the fifth fret, pick it, and move it back to four. And do the exact same picking pattern that we just did in this position. Except when we go down to the uh, the open B string, we're not going to go up to G. We're going to go back to this four, and then slide out to the uh, open strings, the top two or three open strings. Right, and you're going to let that ring for a sec, and then you're going to catch the bottom two or three open strings on the upstroke. drop into this, barring the 7th fret of the low E and the A string, and bounce off the 9 of the A string, twice. Kind of like that, right? And then we're going to repeat the riff again, with a slide into that note. And you repeat it three times. That's one. That's two. Now this is the third time and now we're going to change. We're going to go into this. Right, so uh, just power chords, one finger power chords because of the open tuning. So we're going to go five to seven. When we go on the seven, we're going to hit it twice. Back off to the five, back onto the seven. We're going to do that exact same thing now on the four fives. Back to the five sevens, exact same thing. Now, one final pass through here, and we're going to start on the seven with that. Finishing 5-7, right? So that whole progression. Move it back. Back to 5-7. Stay on the 7. Hit it two or three times at the very end before moving into the first verse. And the first verse is this. So D, uh, it's not D because we are in open tuning, right? But we're going to use a little D major shape here, right? Five, seven, seven. You're going to hit that twice. Off to just a bar on the five. Into this chord here, five, four, four. Off to a bar just on the uh, the D and the G string on the upstroke and then just off to the open strings. Kind of like that, right? And you're going to repeat that twice. And along with the, the open E string, along with these chords. And then we're into that, back into this position again, barring the seventh fret, bouncing off the nine with a little down, up, down to get it started. Repeat. Back into this again one more time. Twice. Back into this. on it for one more half measure back into the main riff
Right, and that is uh, pretty much how you play that one. And uh, we're going to stop there and move on to uh, track eight and round and round. Good then, track eight and round and round. Now this is going to be the final little mini tutorial in this video as the uh, the last song on this album is You See Me Crying, which is more of a piano uh, orchestra ballad. So there's uh, no real guitar riff to speak of in that one, so we're just going to gloss over that one. There's guitar in it, but it's just like chords and whatnot accompanying the, uh, you know, the, the piano and whatnot. So we're just going to skip over that one and uh, finish on this one because this one has a great riff. It's a bit repetitive but uh, you know it's one of the heavier riffs on this album and it goes something like this <laughs> And it just repeats. So uh, it starts with an A power chord and we're gonna like slowly build, right? We're gonna start on this A power chord, then we're gonna move to a B power chord, move it up to a C power chord, and then move it up to a D power chord, slowly building the whole time. Up to D. And after you hit the D about three times, you're going to do that little lick. You're going to back up with your ring finger to the 5 of the A, slide it into 7, down to the 5 of the D, onto the 7 of the A again, and slide out of it. So that's the opening. Build. C. Up to D. And then we're into that. So we're going to grab the third fret of the low E, give it a little downwards tug, and then off to open. And then slide into the seven of the A string. And then you're going to palm mute a couple of chugs on the low E string. Three, I think. And then seven off to five of the A. And that is the riff. And you're going to repeat that like 12 times, I think, before going back into this. B, C, D. Back into the riff again. Again, 12 more times, back into this again. Very heavy riff, but, uh, and that's all. We're gonna stop right there with that one. And uh, that's the main riff and the first verse and the chorus and whatnot. So anyway, I certainly hope you uh, enjoyed this video and found it helpful where you're looking to learn some of these great classic uh, tracks from Toys in the Attic. If you did enjoy this video, please hit that like button. Drop me a subscribe if you haven't done that already, as that would be awfully kind. Hope you're well out there in your little guitar corner of the world, wherever that may find you, and we will see you next time. Cheers.